Edie Popio, how are you? You are welcome to our lesson for fourth week in total. How are you at home? I hope you are keeping safe. Okay, shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Spirit of light, enlighten us. Spirit of light, enlighten us. Spirit of truth, teach us. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Saint Louis, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, you are welcome to our lesson. This week, fourth week, we shall be looking at conscience. Conscience. Conscience is a word that we are all familiar with and we use it every day. So when we say conscience, what does it mean? We look at, before we go continue, we look at the meaning of conscience. Under the topic conscience, we shall be looking at the meaning of conscience. Where is the conscience present? You may be asking the question. What does the Bible say about conscience? And what are the words of conscience in our lives? What is conscience? Conscience is our inner mind that tells us when we have done a right or wrong thing. That voice that speaks to you when you have done wrong thing or right thing, that is your conscience. We are happy whenever we do good thing, but feel sad when we do bad thing because our conscience will trouble us and make us angry with ourselves and be sorrowful if we are found guilty of evil doing. Anytime we do what is bad, we feel so sad. Our conscience will tell us that you have done bad what is wrong now. When we do wrong, when we do wrong, our conscience will let us know. When we do right, our conscience will make us happy. Okay. Now, let's look at this picture. Now, look at these two voices around this boy. The one in white is the good one. That is, that is the voice of God, the voice of God. The other one you can see is carrying a sword, hmm? ready to fight, to kill, to torture. Okay, this one is the one that is wrong voice. This is the one that will tell you to go and fight, to go and do what is wrong. But this one is the one, the one in white, is the one that will tell you what is right. Your conscience tells you when you are right. And when you are wrong. And that is what is happening to this boy. Okay. Where is a pre conscience present? Look at these children. Yes, they are asking the question just like you in the class. You ask the question. Please, sister, where is the conscience present? The conscience is present in the heart of the human person, which allows the person to, go, to do good and avoid evil. Conscience is that silent voice of God in man. It is always ready to correct our evil doings and encourage us to do more good things. That is, conscience is present in our heart. And that is where we hear the voice of God. What does the Bible say about conscience? Let us hear, listen to Samuel and Andra as they read for us. First letter to Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. That is, if we must love it must be from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. That is, our heart 
must be pure at all time. If our heart is pure at all time of sin, that means we have a good conscience. And that is when we can truly have sincere faith in God. The book of prophet Isaiah also tells us, okay, Samuel and Andra, can you read for us? And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Thank you, Andra and Samuel for reading for us. That is just what we saw in the previous slide telling us, that you hear a voice. Which voice? You hear the voice of God, which is always silent, very soft, telling us to turn to the right or, or to, to turn to the right or to turn to the left, which is always to do what is good. But any other voice that tells us to do what is bad, that is not the voice of God. And that is not a good conscience. Is that okay? Good. Now, letter to the Hebrews. Yes, Samuel and Andra, can you read for us again? Okay, good. Thank you. Letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water that is we should try to make our heart to be clean at all time it is only when we have a clean heart a pure heart a pure conscience that we can draw closer to god and we do what is good that is when we can draw closer to god have a good relationship with god Okay, thank you, Samuel and Andra. Okay. We must avoid doing anything that is bad so that we can have joy and peace in our lives. Conscience is a gift from God to all of us and that help us to know what is bad and what is good. It is a gift from God. Even a baby that is giving birth to today has a conscience. We all have conscience. But as we grow, our conscience grows with us. But then, how or what is our conscience growing in? Is our conscience growing in good or is our conscience going, growing in bad? That's where the question is. But we all have a conscience okay so it's a gift from all of from god to all of us to be able to help us to make the right choice take the right decision and do what is right at all times so that god can be happy with us and we too can be happy we have peace in our lives and have joy when we listen to the voice of god through our conscience we are making faithful use of our conscience and therefore it will increase its ability to guide us well. When we listen to our conscience, we are making our conscience is growing. The more we listen to it, the more it grows to guide us. It's like when your daddy is talking to you and your daddy knows that you are always listening, always listening to him, always listening to him. You make your daddy to be happy, to always want to talk to you, to always want to correct you. To always want to have a conversation with you because you are giving attention to him and you always take to correction anytime he talks to you but if you don't listen to him you will get tired and that is the way it is too with our conscience okay so when we listen to our conscience we increase its ability to guide us well in fact if you get to a state that you will think that maybe somebody is standing behind you and the person will be talking so loudly that you can hear it very strong that is when, if we allow it to grow and increase in us. Okay. When we fail to make good use of our conscience by not allowing it to guide us in doing the right thing, you see, we will lose this great gift and the grace of hearing from God 
because our hearts are already blocked with lots of sin. For example, it would be like when you use cotton wool or your hands to cover your ears from hearing correction or advice from your parents or teachers or elders. Are we together? You see what happened now? When you don't pay attention to your conscience, when you don't listen to your conscience, you see what happens. Okay, and we are seeing what happened when we pay attention and listen to our conscience. Okay, good. What is the work of conscience in our lives? Number one, it allows our capacity to reason and calls us to assess our actions. That is, our conscience is the one that calls, it, it increases our capacity. It allows our reasoning to be able to make the right choice. It increases our in, in, the reasoning ability to be able to take the right decision, to be able to make the right choice. And also calls us, anytime we have done wrong or done right, he will call us to assess what we have done. He will call you and say, what you have done, now, is it right or good? That's what our conscience does to us. Okay. Number two, it calls us to strive towards desiring and doing good. That's another work of our conscience. Hmm? Calls us always desiring to do what is good. Hmm? He will tell us, don't be discouraged. Even if you have done, if you have made mistake, he will tell us, don't be discouraged. Don't worry, you can make it again. Just continue. Just try, try, try. That is the work of our conscience. It shapes us and in turn shapes our society through our family, our immediate relationships and so on. Now, by the time we allow our conscience to shape us, to shape our life in a good way and through our family, Automatically, it will in turn, at the same time, shape our society and all those around us. That is, if I allow my conscience to shape, to shape on my life, to direct me, to guide me in the right way. And Sandra, thank you, Sandra, for reading the Bible for us. If Sandra too, uh, I mean, sorry, Andra, if Andra allows her, allow her conscience to guide her and Samuel also allow his conscience to guide him in the right way. You discover that our family will be a happy family, will be a family of God, will be a family that lives in holiness. And before you know, if every family is like that, you discover that our society will be a better place. There will be no killing of one another. There will be no hatred. There will be no unforgiveness. You will, there will be no need to hurt another person. Because the moment you want to hurt another person, your conscience will tell you. When you want to do something that is wrong to another person, your conscience will correct you and call your attention. Please don't do it. Okay, so you see what our conscience does for us. But if unfortunate, we don't listen. Most of us don't listen to our conscience. And that is why our society is, 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 is the way it is today. We pray that God will help us. Hmm? So you make your choice today. Tell yourself, from today henceforth, I will listen to my conscience. But always know that your conscience, when you listen to your conscience, your conscience will always tell you to do what is good. Not to harm another person. So tell yourself, do you promise me now? That you always listen to your conscience. And you can always listen to your conscience through your daddy and your mommy. Through your brothers and sisters. Because your conscience also speaks through them. It is the voice of God that speaks through them. Hmm? Correcting you, directing you to do what is right. To do, to make the right choice and to make the right eh, decision. Is that okay? Good. So for your assignment, define conscience. Mention two works of conscience in our lives. Where is the conscience present? List five occasions when your conscience have spoken to you before or after you have done something. Okay? Please remember to type in, to go to the portal, check the link on assignment Type in your answers there and submit for marking. Thank you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without sin. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.